Hi, uh, D'Amico. Uh, how, how much different do the Packers look to you now than obviously week three was a long time ago than when you saw them back then? And in what ways? Well, I think I don't think they look much different. You know, they're well oiled machine. Those guys are they're very efficient in what they do. That when it comes to running the ball and also throwing the ball, they're just a very efficient offense who takes care of the ball and just present tough challenges at all their spots at the wide receiver position, the running back position, the O line is getting back healthy. So definitely a uh, a good team we're going against here. Good challenge for us. D'Amico, I assume whether it's man or zone, you'd rather not have just one guy in the general area of Devontae Adams. How hard is it to accomplish that goal without compromising, you know, the defense in other areas, particularly against a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, they make it difficult because they do a great job of moving Devontae around. You know, he doesn't stay at one spot. He can move into the slot. He can play outside. So he's all over the place. Uh, we know that he's the top guy, you know, he, to me, is the, one of the best receivers in the NFL, just with his, with his ability, man, he can make plays all over the field, so we have to have eyes on him, we have to be aware of where he is at all times, but, uh, you know, we also have to let the defense just work for us, and it comes down to it, guys, you're in man coverage, you're in zone coverage, whatever it may be, somebody's going to be matched up and somebody has to go make a play when the ball is up in the air. And that's what it's going to come down to. You know, can we go make a play? Hi, hi D'Amico. Uh, well, week three game, A.J. Dillon didn't get as many carries as it seems that, that he has been getting uh, more lately. What kind of challenge does, you know, having to tackle a 250-pounder in this day and age, especially in cold weather, present your defense? Yeah, it's uh he's been getting better throughout the year. You I can see his carries increasing and you see him running the ball much better. Uh what challenge does it present? I don't think it's a huge challenge. It's just we just have to play defense how we play defense and that's just everybody swarming to the ball, everybody is being where they're supposed to be and and trying to play as physical as possible. That's how you handle them. It's not going to be one guy taking them down. You see on film multiple times one guy coming in, he does a good job of running defenders over, you know, just dragging guys along. So it's going to take more than one person to tackle A.J. because he is such a big, strong, physical runner. Yeah, Tamiko, I'm um, not sure exactly what the status will be of Ambry Thomas with a, with a knee thing, but are, are you uh, are you confident of Josh Norman step, being able to step back in if called upon after not playing any defensive snaps the last two weeks? Yeah, I think whoever we have out there, you know, has to step up and make plays for us. Really doesn't matter. So I tell our guys all the time, it's not about really one person on our defense. Whoever steps out there, you know, they're tasked with the challenge of going and just playing within the defense, playing the right techniques, doing what they're supposed to be and being accountable to the other 10 guys that are out there. It doesn't matter what position it is, but if you're out there, you know, guys who are going to be accountable to each other. D'Amico, I have uh, two questions. One is about one person on your defense, and that's Nick Bosa, wondering what he's been able to do um, with you guys this week while he's in the protocol. And then the other would be um, with Aaron Rodgers, in terms of like maybe his most dangerous throw, would it be maybe a back shoulder where it might draw a PI on a guy? Yeah, I think Nick, well, the first question with Nick, I mean, he's he's come along well going through those the NFL, the protocol there, and you know, hopefully he'll be fine by the end of the week. You know, definitely need him out there. <laughs> so hopefully he'll be fine by the end of the week. And with Aaron, his best throw is, man, he can he can make them all, <laughs> which, which makes him so difficult. You know, the back shoulder is definitely one of the, the toughest ones. Just his accuracy on the deep ball is, uh, you can tell while he'll be a future Hall of Famer, it's like not – you don't see guys throw the ball. They don't spin it like Aaron does. And he just has a has an awesome touch, awesome feel. He's very confident back there in the pocket. So, I mean, it's definitely the best quarterback we've, we've seen all year. Miko, a lot of people are asking what the Packers look like, how they're different from week three. But how do you feel your defense is different from week three? You're, you seem a lot much more efficient. But what do you see from your eyes when you're watching film? I think as overall, our defense is much better. You see in the run game, I think we're much better. Uh, just DJ and Eric inside have done an outstanding job. 
I mean, just all all around. We just when I watch that film from the first game and I watch our Dallas game or the LA game, we just it looks like you know two complete different defenses. You know, just the way we're moving, the way we're swarming now is just it looks different. It feels different on film. Many different guys in, but many different guys are still stepping up and making plays for us. I feel like the pass rush is definitely better. Guys are working together a lot more in the pass rush and. Multiple guys are making plays, not just counting on one guy to make plays. You know, multiple guys are making plays for us when it comes to rushing a passer. When it comes to our corners on the edge, I think we're playing better there. So it's just all around. Just guys have improved throughout the year. D'Amico, your defense was so dominant the whole game in Dallas. Um, but on that final drive – the Dallas offense was really able to get down the field without timeouts and, and get those three completions near the sideline. After watching the film, is there anything different that you would have called in that situation? Were you tr were you trying to defend the the sidelines? What was your thought process on that? Just that final drive. Now we're defending. They had to score a touchdown, so you know if they wanted to keep, you know, ditching it and getting out of bounds. That's fine, but we knew at the end of the day to win the game, we couldn't allow them to get in the end zone, and we weren't going to give up a, a huge chunk play to those guys in the middle of the field. I assume you've reviewed the week three game against Green Bay. What emotions were stirred when you had to review the last two completions Rodgers had in that game? I mean, that's, again, you know, incredible throws by him. And you see why he's the best quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, very great throws by him. But also you just see where we can be better uh, defensively in those situations as well. And I think we are we are better, uh, much better defense than we were then. So, uh, you know, week three seems like so long ago, right? <laughs> so long ago. and But I, I'm happy for week three. Uh, I, I'm real, very happy for week three. I think it's uh, definitely a pivotal moment in our, our season just defensively, just – for guys just making the turnaround and really, really changing. You know, you, you take a heartbreaking loss like that, you know the plays that we could have made defensively in that game. You go back, we had multiple opportunities to make plays to help our team win that game. And defensively, feel like we did not help our team win that game when the offense went down and scored to put us in position to win the game. So defensively, just feel like, guys have owned it more to where we have to put the team on our back to be be better in those situations and to make plays when it comes time for us to make plays. Amigo, it's been, it's been reported that you have an interview with the Vikings today. Uh, first of all, is that coming after this? And then have you asked Robert Sala just about that process, gotten any advice from him or, or anyone else? Yeah, we'll I – mean, yeah, yeah, interview with the Vikings, we'll handle that. You know, the next couple of days we'll get that handled. But main focus right now for me, man, is just all on the Packers. And that's where I am right now is just all on the Packers and how can we play our best versus the Packers to get a win. D'Amico, DJ Jones said that after the Dallas game that uh, Eric Armstead was the most important piece of the 49ers defense. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about that and, and how – he's uh, stepped into that role. Yeah, I mean, I love that DJ says that about Eric, but I think I, I spoke about it before where Eric is just his unselfish move going inside, you know, when he's been a defensive end for us so long, but him to move inside and to not be as comfortable inside with the technique, but to see him just continue to work it, continue to focus on the small details of playing three technique or two eye and continue to get better at it. And now to see him over the past couple of weeks just really dominate inside, you know, it's just – it's awesome to watch. You know, it's awesome to see a guy like Eric, you know, step in and step up for our defense. When we needed him most, he stepped up the biggest for us, and that's been the, the biggest turnaround in our defense is the play of Eric Armstead inside. Got time for three more, guys? Uh, I Demico, have one more about the the run defense against the Packers. They they weren't really explosive in week three, but they managed, it seemed, to kind of keep the line moving. I think 100 yards and 25 carries, so four pop. Uh, it, what, you know, was the primary problem there? And, and how important is it to make sure they can't do that again so that Aaron Rodgers is, is a little bit more off schedule? Yeah, we definitely have to tackle better. We gave up too much leaky yardage, and I'm showing the guys the film like, 
we tackle a guy, we, we got a body on him at two yards and a run that should be two yards, it ends up going for six yards. And we have to make sure that we have guys at a two-yard gain. It has to be a two-yard gain. So we can't allow leaky yardage. The yards after contact there, that, that was the issue in the first game. And we just have to, you know, populate the football much better. We got to have more guys show up around the ball because both of their backs are really talented backs. So we have to just swarm and tackle better. Amigo, uh, Eric Armstead's play seems to have improved so much since he's moved to defensive tackle full-time. He's making such an impact. Is that his new home full-time? Is he going to be playing there uh, next year too? I don't know that. <laughs> wherever he needs to play. You know, wherever Eric Eric can play outside, Eric can play inside. That's Eric, he's a he's a playmaker no matter where he is. If he was When he was on the outside, you know, he had a huge year for us. 19 where he got over 10 sacks playing outside. You know, he moves inside this year, probably the most tackles he's had in his career. So the guys had – Eric has had career years on the outside and on the inside. So you're talking about just a, a very talented a talented player no matter where he plays, whatever position it is. You can just call his position playmaker. That <laughs> Last one, Eric. D'Amico, in regards to your the other coordinator, Mike McDaniel, uh, we've seen his personality quite a bit this year. I mean, he's obviously got an um, unusual humor. I mean, great humor, whatever. Uh, but anyway, how would you describe him just as a guy and your relationship with him? Uh, just – Mike is Mike is one of the probably the one of the most detailed, one of the hardest working guys. I don't I don't think I can ever beat him in a building. <laughs> Every time I, I show up, his car is always he always beats me in. But always one of the first guys in the building. But in the, all the work he puts in, you know, behind the scenes, it's he grinds. Mike grinds, and he definitely deserves you know all the recognition that he's getting. You know, with he's a very smart guy. Um, very, you know, very fun guy. You talk about the humor. He's he's a very fun guy. He has some quick wit about himself, and uh, he's just done a he's done an excellent job, man. Ever since I've been around him and just seeing his growth as a coach, as a person, and I can't be happy enough for Mike and the recognition that he's gotten. It's well deserved for the work that he's put in. So happy for him. All right, thank you guys. Hey, Debo Samuel, we're live. You want to get a cameo? No? Okay. How are we doing, guys? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Uh, great, bud. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, when you, uh, I mean, you're, you're often, you know, serious and talking football with us, but you also are not afraid to, you know, show uh, your personality and, and humor. Um, I don't know if you had felt like this was any sort of decision you made, but you know, when you started to talk to us, you know, this season for the first time, was it like, hey, I'm just going to be myself? Because it seems like you could have opted for a little more conservative approach. Um, all I heard when you just said that was that you think that I'm funny. <laughs> Hilarious. That's all I heard. Um, no, I think uh, there we have a lot of support. You know, there's a lot of people I've worked with that have experience um, in doing press conferences and then you know, our PR department is top of the line. So the, the key thing they, um, that it really was, uh, the key advice that I really received was just be yourself. So, um, that's all I try to do. Um, but, uh, whether, whether people find that funny or not, um, I, I there's probably people both ways, but, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that there's a piece of my personality that comes out. I get, it's been reported you're supposed to interview with the Dolphins today, I believe. Have you have you already done that? And and if so, or, or even if not, what has this week been like for you in terms of trying to prepare for a game, but also kind of having that in the background? Um, there there is uh, something scheduled. Uh, hasn't happened yet. Um, but like I said before, you know that they're, they're they're as a football coach, you you feel. Um, there's a level of anxiety if if there's anything distracting you from your job at hand because you know that it's hard enough to win um as it is and and to your your teammates are um 
are counting on you. And, and, and so it, it, it's been pretty easy to, to, uh, to answer your question. Um, because of my, uh, loyalty to my job, my teammates, and, um, really, really hasn't been in the forefront of my, my mind because you, I mean, you work your whole career, uh, to be in a position like this in the divisional, uh, round of the playoffs, um, one game away from the NFC championship game. You, these, these are few and far between. So, um, with as many days and hours that we work as coaches, um, it's not hard to, to focus, um, in big moments like these. Mike, you obviously could have done whatever you wanted in life, but you followed your passion, which is football in general. Uh, since you've been in the NFL, it seems like you've developed a passion for the X's and O's of the run game in particular. What about that puzzle thrills you? Well, it, you know, really it all started in Washington. Um, and moving on, you know, we, we had a tendency as a coaching staff to get fired every place we're at. So, um, and I, I just really answered the bell to what Kyle needed most um, in terms of assistance and you, you want value. So um, I was fortunate to be around some excellent football coaches and um, Chris Furster and Kyle Shanahan. And there was, there was an avenue um, for me to, uh, to help the, the team that I was on. So that r was really the driving force. Um, but, but really it's, you know, I was a receiver coach, um, before this and, you know, football in general, that, that puzzle you speak of, that's a, that's a good, good use of words that, that it, it is intriguing. Um, but it was really more circumstance that, um, drove me into the avenue that I'm currently in. Guess that that question was a tough follow up. After you're, you're a tough guy to follow because nobody nobody wants to ask the question now. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was a tough follow, but I'll I'll do my best. Uh, piggybacking on uh, Eric's question, actually from earlier, do you use sense of humor in your coaching? Is that part of your coaching style, and has it helped you just relate to players over the years? Well, I think uh, early early in my career. Um, uh, w when I first started working with Kyle in Houston, one of the things that stood out to, to me when he was um, giving me advice when we first started working together was that it is extremely important to be authentic. Um, the, the bottom line is players uh, want to succeed as much, if not more, than coaches. All, they're, they're, they're living their dream, and if you can show them that you're a tool in realizing their dream – um, that's all they want. So you're, you're authentic, honest, and you work hard to, uh, make players better, uh, AKA coaching. Um, th that's all that's required of the position, um, in, in our, uh, in our chosen field. And that's really what I focus on is that, um, uh, players and, and people that I work with that they, they know what they see is what they get. Hey, uh, Mike, um, what is it about Debo? Who? What's up, man? Mike Jones, let's go. What's up? How you doing, man? Good. Good, good. You know, there's a lot of great athletes in the NFL. A lot of them can do a lot of different things. But what is it about Debo that makes him unique um, that you guys can use him like you do? And when was it that you guys realized, hey, let's try using him in this unconventional way for a run for a wide receiver? Um, rather than just leaving him as that. Well, he, Debo has been unique to all of our careers because he is a uh, – you're always trying to define what a football player is, and it's it's still hard to define. Um, but the, the game moves slow for him, and he's fearless, and he's fast, and he's big, and he's hard to tackle. Um, the, the evolution of how we use him, that's a product of two things, uh, him being a really good football player, and, and I think um, Kyle does an outstanding job of – really pushing his um his staff to uh open their mind and see what's there um maybe that we haven't done or really think through the whys of everything that we do so that combination of a skill set with a with a particular player and the the drive that's um you know Kyle's been pushing on me since 
um, the day I started working with them, um, that that type of those type of things um, end up getting or uh, rendering the results that you guys are seeing um, from a whole staff perspective. We're, we're all uh, committed to utilizing our players the best way we can, and um, every person on the offensive staff uh, contributes um, in that direction. It takes a village um, to do things uh, that that maybe haven't haven't been necessarily done with um, specific players. This is also another Debo question, kind of related to that. Just thinking about the, the touchdown run where, you know, is it's slow developing and it looks like nothing there, and then all of a sudden he's just cut cut back and he's basically in the end zone. How much of, uh, of that is, is coaching in terms of being patient? How much is it just Debo being able to identify those cutback lanes? And then do you almost look to create plays where he has more time to sort of survey the field because of his vision? No, so on that particular play, as coaches, we said – score no it the it, it is it is really cool to watch him play you, you you it changes kind of your d job description a little bit to where you're trying to give a guy opportunities and not necessarily thinking exactly about defining stuff more abstract about hey how do we get the ball with space so that that is a unique um thing that that we've kind of grown into um but he you know debo would make any coach look great. There's, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I've never, ever, ever been around a football player that called his own shot. You know, I get in basketball, but when you're playing a, um, you know, 22 people are on the field, 11 of them are trying to um, tackle you is with every ounce of um, being that they have. And you just say, hey, uh, yeah, give me the ball. I'm going to you know, I'm going to put the ball in the box and for him to do it. That was a special moment that only a special player could accomplish. When you're looking back at that first Green Bay game, I asked D'Amico Ryans, how much as a self-assessment have you evolved from that point? So the same thing for you. I mean, Debo had two carries for zero yards in that game. How much has the growth been from week three to now? Yeah, see, we, we don't seem that smart now, do we? The, the, um, collectively that that's the way we look at it though. That's the way that, um, it's been ingrained, um, w within the entire organization to be extremely accountable. And, and you look, um, you look back at that and you're like, wow, how did, how did that happen? But, uh, it, how could we go the course of a game and just not get them the ball? There's so many ways to do it, but, um, it's a natural progression. Um, the, the, you know, invention is, there's a phrase I can't remember right now. Um, but like the really out of necessity, we, we found different ways to get them. The, there it is. Uh, we found different ways to get him the ball. Um, and, and to his credit, he's, um, really, I mean, he's owning a lot of positions right now it, for every time that you guys sit there and say, um, wow, th they move them around a lot. Well, no, Debo is moving around a lot. That means he has to be accountable for every single assignment, every single thing you guys see him do. Uh, you don't, uh, there's no success that comes out of it if he's not aligned properly, if the timing of whatever play it is isn't on point. Um, that's something that uh, you don't know that someone's up for the challenge until um, you progressively get there. And it's it's something that I know our whole team um, is really proud of the way he's matured and um, came, he's come into his own um, in 2021-2. Hello, Mike. Um, What's going on? How are you? I'm good. How, how, how is uh, Jimmy Garoppolo doing? What do you anticipate him being able to do in practice? And then the other question would be about your running game and whether – you think they're doing well enough right now where they could do another 285 yard output? Well, um, I think uh, Green Bay's defense might have something to say about that. That are they're, they're uh, they you can tell they pride themselves on um, being a tough uh, a tough unit that does not want to get the ball ran on them. So I don't I th I I wouldn't go anywhere close to predicting um, those once in a lifetime type deals, but. Um, I, the, ju just the, the game in, in general, it's, it's too hard to predict, 
Um, if you could refresh me on the first part, I got distracted. Yeah, what do you anticipate Jimmy Garoppolo? Oh, Jimmy. Throwing-wise um, throwing today. Yeah, the uh, well, with the way Jimmy um, takes care of himself, and he's you know at this point in the season, you you would have to it'd be like pulling teeth to get him uh, not to do everything he can to perform at his highest level. So you know it's a bump and a bruise that um, for him is a big deal, but for the San Francisco 49ers or fan base and us, you know that we can all count on Jimmy doing whatever it takes so that he can perform. Uh, at the level he needs to on Saturday, you know, so um, not too concerned. We, we um, the practice is yet to happen, but if I was a crystal ball reader, which I've declared that I'm not, um, I, I would, I would anticipate him throwing it well today and, um, and us moving forward from there. Last one. Hey Mike, I know necessity is the mother of invention. There it is. Um, but Ah. There we go. I, I, it makes you feel better. I, I had to Google it. it was okay. Not quite. Yeah. Yeah. So, just wanted to throw throw that at you. Uh, the the first run by uh, Debo in the game against Dallas. Um, it, everyone blocked to the right, and like uh, Kittle had a kick out block, and, mm -hmm. and Diggs was left unblocked. But it looked really. I mean, it just had a good mm -hmm. <laughs> aesthetically pleasing no. because it, it was just this entire wall to the right. Um, and everyone had their guy. Uh, I was wondering, I don't know if you ever say that was done to perfection, you know, or, or it's never, you know, quite to that level, but you know, I don't know. Was that close? Yeah, no, the, um, to, to be honest, uh, we were, we were hoping for, and, and we were ready for it to be more. Um, you got to credit the Dallas Cowboys defense. Um, I think it was a nine yard gain that you're talking about. And, uh, the safety in the uh, the defensive uh, offensive left corner, defensive right corner, um, compressed it a little bit. Um, but that was something that you know, as a as a coaching staff, that that we had pinpointed it. Uh, we thought that we might have a chance on that play. Um, and you know, the 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 real credit goes to Lake and Tomlinson and um, Trent Williams, who d did a masterful backside block. Uh, I, I think uh, George Kittle um, really executed. You know, there's 11 guys executing um, uh, to their to the highest degree uh, the technique that we work on all year. Um, that's what it takes to to be able to do something. Um, you know, when an NFL defense co goes into a game and says you're not going to run it on us, it, well, everyone better execute, be, be on the same page. Um, uh, Chris Furster's drill work better be on point. Um, all of the things have to align and then Debo has to feel it, run it correctly. Um, don't forget he has to catch the ball when it's tossed to him. Um, and, and so you're excited about that, but, um, I, you know, we're every, as coaches, it's something that Mike Shanahan really instilled in us, um, early, but we're coaching for every play to be a touchdown. Um, that's why we're disappointed a lot, but that, uh, we were excited that, um, it got some yardage, but you know the you, those plays are cool. But unless you're converting on third downs and your defense is playing well, um, they they go in the history's history books as nothing. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, thanks. Hey, faithful! Don't forget to click here to subscribe to our YouTube.